You're listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast with your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is episode number two. Welcome, beautiful people. It's Letitia here, and Welcome to another episode of the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast, a podcast designed to inspire, empower, and support you on the journey of uncovering your truth and purpose in the world. So I'm so excited that today is the day that I get to finally release this interview with the beautifully inspiring Anushka Florence of the Goddess Space. For those who don't know what the Goddess Space is, It is a physical and digital sacred space for women to reconnect to their truth, remember who they are, and feel heard, supported, and inspired in circle with other women. Through the goddess space, Anushka runs weekly goddess gatherings, private rituals, one-to-one goddess sessions, and also an eight-week online mentoring course to become the most magical you. I first met Anushka about six months ago after my wonderful coach introduced me to the goddess space in London. Since then, I've been back to the goddess space about once per month because, well, I love it. I've sat in a secret sharing circle, a moonlight goddess gathering, and various workshops from a magical cacao ceremony to running a soulful-led business to understanding our menstrual magic to finding my voice. The goddess space is a spiritual haven and Anushka is an expert at creating sacred space for women to gather and reclaim their feminine power. In this episode, you will hear how Anushka went from working in events to following a calling within her to create this space that is the goddess space without ever having been to a women's circle before. We discussed so many wonderful points on her own journey that I know will resonate for many of you, including exploring the concept of space within ourselves, honoring our shadow, the role of flow, surrender, and allowing, the need for both masculine and feminine energies in creating, and the guidance of misalignment, serendipity, and intuition. After you listen to this episode, if you haven't yet left a review on iTunes, please make sure you subscribe and leave your review so that other people like you can find this podcast and unlock their truth and purpose. Now, let's dive into the episode. Welcome, Anushka, uh, here with me today on the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I met Anushka uh, earlier this year at the Goddess Space, which is an amazing space that she will tell you more about. And I have just loved going back uh, as often as I can. The work that Anushka is doing in the world is so inspiring for me. And um, that's why I've asked her on today, because I wanted to share her story about how she got to doing the work she's doing today um, with all of you listening. And um, I know that it will inspire you and I'd also just love to connect you. So Anushka, could you let our wonderful listeners know who you are and the work that you are doing in the world today? Definitely, thank you. Well, my name's Anushka um, and I have been running the Goddess Space for about Uh, three years. And it's a space that supports and inspires women to gather together or to connect with themselves and really reconnect back to their truth, to the essence of them and who they are. And for me, space is is, um, a super important factor of it because it's not just the physical space that I create, but it's a space created within ourselves that truly allows for our hearts, messages, our wisdom and our power to to come through. Um, so yeah, that's what what I'm creating at the moment. Spaces. 
<laughs> Space is so beautiful. And actually, Anushka and I were just talking about this before we started recording, but Anushka's written a beautiful piece about how to create space, which I will be linking with the show notes. And I recommend everyone um, reading that. But that's actually a pretty interesting um, subject to turn to because you um, creating space was something that you learned through your mother. So it's always been a part of your life. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, totally. So um, I grew up in a very bohemian environment. My mom's an interior designer and would channel her creativity and her spirituality through creating spaces. So I was constantly surrounded by changing spaces. Anytime her mood changed, our house changed. And it was a total representation and expression of her. And I think through that, I started questioning space I started becoming so interested in space and and the spaces that I found myself in but also inwardly the spaces I created inside myself um, and for me that's been a huge part of my journey actually creating time to be in my space and to listen to what's coming up in my space and to honor my space if I'm feeling uplifted or if I'm feeling negative or if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling anxious, how can I honor that space? And that's a journey that, that you have to go on inwardly. Absolutely. And was this something that you were aware of as a child or um, as a, you know, when did you sort of start questioning that space within you? Mm, well, I think as a child, you know, as a little child, we're all honoring our space, you know, and I think something happens as you grow up and it's, you know, your life journey. We all have different challenges and obstacles, but they come to us to challenge that space, to distract ourselves from our space and see if we really ha are having that courage to confront it. Um, and in my teenage years and early twenties, I definitely didn't. I was not connected to my space whatsoever and therefore was living a life that was in total disalignment to my truth and to the path that I was meant to be walking down. Um, and it was when I hit my kind of early mid twenties that I was confronted by, by my, by my truth, you know, by the shadow, by the darkness. And it was the first time I'd created the space and allowed it to come through. And that unleashed you know, the journey that I've been on, it was the catalyst for me choosing to walk in a different direction. When you talk about shadow, I think it would be great to hear a little bit more about what that is. Some of our listeners might not have heard the, the term before, but this is something that people are speaking a lot more about um, recently, or at least in the circles that I'm in. So it'd be great to sort of share a bit more about that if you could. Definitely. Well, our shadows are, you know, the, the parts of ourselves that we rarely allow to come out. So it's, it's the, the, the things within us that we most likely suppress and um, disassociate ourselves with because we feel society considers them as, as negative or, mm. or ugly or bad. Um, and when we suppress these aspects of ourselves, we just perpetuate them more. We just, you know, spark them up and they come out in, in, in negative ways. But when we start to look at the shadow and, and start to question it and try to understand it, and if we have anxiety and if we have pain and if we have demons or, you know, horrible voices in our head, instead of running away from them, can we, can we create a conversation with them? Can we allow them to be there? Can we understand what it is that they're calling from us and try and find a way to, to honor the needs that have been unmet so that we can rise from them? I love that. That's, that's been such a key lesson on my own journey. Um, the, the quicker you deal with these uh, darker or perceived darker sides of yourself, the quicker they turn into a really a great catalyst for change or there's something to be learned from them. And I was having this conversation with a friend recently about how these seemingly 
difficult times that we go through or with our body, our body um, being sick in some way or ill, these are actually uh, times to be grateful for because they're showing us something that needs to change in our life, which we wouldn't otherwise become aware of potentially. Have you found that to be true for yourself? Oh, absolutely. I mean, even this past weekend, I, I got engaged on, on Thursday. And of course, you know, you think you're going to get engaged and it's going to be the best moment and time of your life. And it, and it absolutely was. And I was elated. But then I found myself suddenly dealing with parts of myself that I didn't quite like. And it was shadow selves arising. And I really had to sit with that and to really feel it and be like, surrender to these these sides that were coming up, which were very controlling aspects, very ego control aspects. And I allowed myself to just sit with them and, and understand that, hold on, they're coming up on the most happy time of my life to remind me that these are the things that need to be cleared as I step through. You know, as I step through and I mark a new cycle, there are still things that are, are rising up that are ready you know, making themselves apparent so that I can clear them. I had the same experience when <laughs> I was engaged, I got engaged. And um, yes, it was this moment that you spend, well, for many women, most of their lives building up to in some way. And then it happened and we're really unprepared for what next. And I, I had as well a lot of my shadow come up. I didn't know how to process it. And it was really confusing because this is the, you know, quote, happiest time of your life. So that that's also a great point too. these big life events that we have and the way that we feel after the fact might not actually be the way that we thought we'd feel on achieving them, which is why in my experience, it's difficult when we are setting goals or expectations for ourselves, rather than responding to flowing through what feels good, we end up in a place potentially where we um, put a lot of um, weight on what we thought the outcome would be, but we don't actually have any control of that outcome. Absolutely. And the magic that happens when you actually receive something that's not in in kind of alignment with what you thought it would be and you just sit with it and you allow it to be there you realize when you come out of it the magic the true magic that happens you know because you have you've taken something with your honesty and true true rawness and you've let go you've let go of expectations you've allowed something in and when you rise from that and honor that feeling then you are truly given the gift you know, I love that. I, from what we've discussed so far, the word that comes up for me, which I've just written down is reflection and the importance of reflection and making time and space for that, which could be through journaling or meditation or wh whatever process you want. But has that reflection been a big part of understanding where you might need to go next for you? Definitely. So I, um, I take my time to reflect often, um, usually on a full moon. And my points of reflection really ground and center me back to where I am now and what lies ahead, where, where this path has taken me, because I'm a true believer that, you know, we show up to be of service, but the universe is constantly giving us signs to help us and guide us on our way. So we're not really alone in the process. We're constantly co-creating. Um, but we need to be open to the messages and signs available to us so that we know that we're walking down the right path. So taking that time to reflect, center and ground yourself, look around and be like, okay, is this in alignment right now? Or have I gone off track? Am I, am I in my center? Or am I doing it from my ego? Am I doing it from society's expectations, beliefs, fears, you know, and that point of reflection, that time to reflect keeps me in my heart and keeps me on my path. Mm. And it's also because you're doing it with the full moon, it's happening you know, every month, basically, which is a, a really good amount of time to sort of get a feeling for where you're going, but then not to get too lost in whatever path you've taken. 
Exactly. And to know that each month holds its own its own energy and its own weight. And some months might be really busy and other months might be really slow. And each month has a gift for us. Each month has an energy. And if we can just be in that in that month, in that cycle, just as a separate entity, then we truly start flowing, you know? Mm. I love that. Yes, this this idea of um, the present moment as well, has that been reconnecting to the present moment? Has that been a big part of your journey or have you always been someone who uh, was very connected with the present? Oh, gosh, no. Um, <laughs> I, oh, oh, no, I was <laughs> in the future, in the past, like never in the present. I used to call my, especially my early 20s, like my time on autopilot. I was just, I wasn't, I just pressed the button and I was just flying through something. I wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't steering my, my wheel, you know, some, everything else was, was moving it for me. And, and that's because I wasn't looking in the present moment. I wasn't here. Um, but being here and being present and mindful connects you back to, to all that is, you know, and, and, I look to nature and I see the presence of nature and I see how committed it is to being in the now and to going with the flow and to moving with the cycles. And, you know, we are an embodiment of that. And if we, you know, our challenge as humans is that we are humans. That's a challenge, right? And therefore, in this human body, in this human form, can we create stillness? Can we create presence? Can we embody the, the groundedness of a tree, of a mountain, you know, the flowingness of a river and a stream, the unconditional love and being of animals. Like, can we harness all of these things around us when our challenge is the human experience? Yeah, there's so much there and particularly about connection, really. Connection other than just with humans, but with the universe itself and that realization that we are all connected no matter what form it takes. So I wanted to go back to what were you doing before um, the goddess space and what did your life look like at that time? So before the goddess space, I was always into events. Um, I loved creating experiences. Um, So I was in the art world doing art events, fashion events, music events. Um, Wanted to always create events and then... I found that I would put my heart and soul into creating these experiences and then they would be over. And I had a real conflict with that because I didn't feel nourished or supported when they finished. Um, And as I began on a personal note to kind of dive inwardly spiritually into, into myself, I began to want to merge the two. So I was learning so much about myself. I was journeying. I was meeting the most incredibly spiritual people. I was so immersed in this, on this spiritual quest. Um, and it, it happened very serendipitously. Um, I was working at the time for a company and they were a online marketplace for creative experiences. So it was my job to find creative people and support them in creating experiences for others. And I realized that I wanted to be one of those people. I wanted to create spiritual experiences for other people. So I began holding women's circles in my apartment um, on every new moon with an astrologer that I was working very closely with named Zoe. And um, they just started flowing. It was effortless. It It was from the heart. It was no marketing. It was no goals and plans plans and structure. It was just an idea that that came to me and I, I was open to it. Um, and that was the beginning of it. (laughs) And then, and since then it's evolved quite a bit. So you now have, um, you, you hold workshops and you do other events. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Definitely. So, so after I started doing these women's circles kind of once a month, I, I was sitting at my desk and I was like, all I wanted to do was organize that was, was be there was be channeling this. So, um, 
it took me about a year and a half to finally leave my job. Um, and in that time, I always say to people, it was the perfect amount of time because, of course, I knew I wanted to leave. I knew that this wasn't my life purpose. I had found my purpose. But I needed that interim period to really um, ground myself in what I was about to do, you know, to really set myself up so that I had the structure and the support to actually take that step and go full time. Um, so in that time, I started learning more. I, I was doing more circles. I started doing one to one sessions, um, started building an online community and a social media presence. And I really set a foundation for myself so that I felt safe enough to take that step and finally leave. Um, and that was in January of this year. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That I think there's a lot to be said. I mean, it depends uh, what, what you want, but to have that security in a way of testing this, work that you want to do before actually leaving the comfort of a regular income seems to be um, advice that a lot of people give who have made that step or ones who haven't and have said in hindsight that's what they would might recommend so that you're not putting so much pressure on yourself um, but then you can do either way. Um, me, I've just <laughs> dove head first but <laughs> you, you, it depends what sort of um, foundation you have because if you're going to be financially struggling and you've got that on top of you and your it it changes the nature of your work i think you don't have as much freedom to really be guided by the right intentions absolutely. from the beginning absolutely and for me that was so important because i was building my business around a very feminine feminine led um you know support system and i knew that in my feminine and in my truth, structures and business plans and goals and, you know, uh, masculine driven concepts that I'd been programmed to wasn't my intention. But I knew that in order to be fully supported, I needed to bring the masculine. I needed support. And, you know, I always compare it to having a baby, right? So you have a baby, you need a man to have a baby, okay? <laughs> One man needs a man and a baby is born. And it's the same thing. And I'm talking about energies more than people. You need a masculine energy. You need a feminine energy. And together you birth something. And what I would say, you know, to anyone that is thinking, you know, that has that little spark inside of them that they want more than their current space, give yourself that time because it takes nine months to have a baby, Right. So allow that idea to, to really sprout inside you and give yourself support, feel supported, feel nourished, feel nurtured so that you can truly bring this creation in in the most supportive environment possible. Oh, that, is, that, is, I, that really it resonates so much. The, and even just let's even outside of the business world or running a business, but this idea of understanding the need to draw from both energies, masculine and feminine, regardless of gender, and just how that's what I've loved working with the moon has been the moon cycle. It has been drawing upon the, the yin and the yang energies. And for me, that's, <laughs> that's a reminder for myself every few days that, okay, I need to focus differently. I need to change my focus. And that's so for women, uh, particularly who haven't got that masculine tendencies, it's a very different way to work. And it can feel really constraining in a lot of ways. But you do need that structure to be able to create something to make something. So I um, thank you for sharing that. I love that with with the women's circles, did you, had you attended many women's circles before you started at the Goddess I've Space? I've never attended a women's circle before. Wow. I didn't even know what they were. I just had this calling and it was, I was working with so many different women at the time. I was meeting amazing women and they were spiritual teachers and they came to me at a time where they were just sharing wisdom and 
I would go home every night after I met with one of them, just skipping back to my room and like this little girl writing everything down and couldn't believe like the information that was being passed on to me. And I was in such awe about it. I had this, this, this message, like you need to share this with other women. Other women need to know about these things. They need to hear, they need to connect, they need to, to feel it. And that was it. It was, I didn't feel right keeping it all to myself. So I felt like it was my role to facilitate a space where we could all start learning. We could start learning what we haven't been taught. Um, and for the rise of the feminine, this is the most important work for me that I could be doing. It's unearthing wisdom and, and, and guidance and power that we have so long been suppressed and, and blocked from. Absolutely. That, uh, the idea of sharing in itself is um, we're taught to be competitive and to keep everything that could um, possibly get us ahead in life to ourselves. It goes against a lot of what we learn growing up. And I think especially for women um, where a lot of s circles in schools can be quite very competitive. So this collaborative nature and the power of when women come together, it, I, I could not believe just how powerful it was. Um, and that was also just going to the goddess space. It was really beautiful what would happen in a, in a, one of the circles. And I've, and I've been to different ones, um, the full moon gatherings, but also some of your workshops and just I, that having the permission by hearing another person either share vulnerably or even just sharing something that might resonate with you, that relief that you get just from hearing another person voicing something um, is that there's nothing else like it, I think. So that's, that's so, I can't believe you'd never been to women's circles and just started this and you, you really trust your intuition and your instincts and let that guide you. And I think that my next question for you is, is um, like, what advice would you give to someone who maybe feels that deep yearning to do something meaningful with their lives, but they've really just have no idea where to even start? Well, when you're really, you know, anyone that wants to is feeling an urge or is feeling a calling, Remind yourself that you're never given what you can't handle. And if you are, then it's coming from the mind. So the heart will never give you something that you cannot create, that you cannot do. And if you are feeling this deep calling within to do something, then just start exploring it. Surrender to it. Allow it to come in. Because it's not going to say, quit your job now and go and do this and run and it's, it's not how it works you are being called to explore something and let that be the catalyst for for the path that you are being called to walk down absolutely that the the word curiosity was something that really helped me on my own journey i had thought wrongly that i needed to just go with what i'm passionate about and so I was searching, well, what is this passion? I am passionate about lots of things. And it wasn't until I made that shift to listen to those little taps of curiosity and just explore that one step at a time that things just changed and it really just spiraled from there very quickly. To, what do you think about curiosity? <laughs> well, that's it, exactly. It, it's actually... When you're curious about something, you're allowing yourself to be led by something, right? So you are so not in that control mindset that actually blocks and sabotages the opportunities that are trying to make their way through. So when you're curious and you're being led by your heart and led by this kind of inner little girl who just wants to see things and wants to go somewhere and is just doesn't have that hold on her, then things start happening because you're in your heart and you're in flow and when you're in flow things flow things move you know literally um when you are trying to find something when you are you are too too strong in looking 
you're going to miss the signs because you're looking at the wrong thing. Mm, that's, yeah. yep, that's right. It, it clouds your perception. It really does. And that not that letting go or surrendering control is really difficult in a world where we're all so scared. What are some tips or tools that you use to remind yourself to let go? So I use awareness very strongly. I, I know the difference between when I am in my mind and when I am in my heart and I learn to catch myself. So sometimes I don't get it straight away and sometimes external things have to happen to remind me you've drifted. And that could be, you know, me feeling sad or emotional and, and suppressing it and suddenly that then leading to frustration and anger and things going wrong and life not being this effortless experience, right? And when I start feeling those things and things around me are, are, are not in alignment, I take that time to step back and see it as a, as a little bit, as an illusion, you know? The external things that are happening are just illusions to remind me what I'm not facing inside, what's not, what I'm, you know, not responding to. Um, and at that moment, I let go. At that moment, I let go of all the external circumstances that are trying to bring me into this space, that are trying to distract me. And I surrender to them. Um, and that, for me, is a really useful way. I'm sure that many of our listeners will have had moments like this in their life where things are just really confusing and crazy and you're frustrated and things aren't changing. And, you, and then it's that moment where you're like, you know what, I give up. I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm not going to do anything more on this. I'm just going to go and focus on something different and that's it. I, I give it up. And then <laughs> knock, 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 there is your answer or the opportunity that you are waiting for. Exactly, because, you know, when we – when we dive so deep into everything that's going wrong, we are blocking ourselves more and more and more from seeing the truth of it, you know, from opening our eyes to see it. Um, and when we surrender and we just let go, it reveals itself. It unshadows because we're not holding on so tightly. Mm. And uh, just moving to a slightly different topic with your own journey, how, how have you found turning to your inner child or even looking back on um, clues that might have been given to you during your childhood about what you enjoyed or what your natural gifts were? Ha have you found that um, to be helpful along your own journey? Oh, absolutely. I um, As a little girl, I was so sensitive I felt everything and I cried I laughed I expressed myself so fully I was that girl who would just free of expression um and I also had a had a part of me that knew so deeply without any doubt whatsoever that there was so much more to life than this mm. that there was something bigger going on that there were things at play and it was magic I saw magic in everything everything um and as I grew up I lost that I totally lost that belief and when I it was only when I returned back to myself that I was reminded of who that girl was mm -hmm. you know who that little girl was before everything wasn't that mm. and yeah yeah I've found the, the most beneficial exercise that I've done has been really trying to tap into who was that little girl who I'd forgotten and it is it's incredible how much you you can gain about yourself by tapping into that person like even little things about I don't know, I used to love rock climbing as a kid 
And as an adult, that was something I would never do. I would just, I was too scared. I decided that was something that I just, no, was a big no for me. Over the past year, because I had a friend who was interested in um, bouldering, which is uh, indoor rock climbing, and I said, no, absolutely, I don't do that. I'm scared of heights. Nope. I had a little nudge of curiosity, which I followed, and I had so much fun. I loved it. And then I remembered all the times I used to love it as a child. And so that's just a simple example, but even little things like that can give you so much insight. Totally. And a really um, amazing question that I was asked and now I often ask my clients is, what would you do if you weren't afraid to do it? You know, if you weren't afraid, what would you do? And for me, that always ignites that inner child that always ignites that little girl who wasn't afraid she wasn't afraid of anything so she did and that question constantly brings me back to my truth yeah i love that question it's it's one i also use and it there's just no denying your truth when you answer that question is there it's really interesting i've seen this like life as being as you mentioned before the fear it's all learned it's all illusions and our job is to get back to that inner truth that we are all love and to move away from the fear because when you look at when you ask yourself what would you do if you had no fear that is really also asking yourself what would you do if you like really loved yourself loved and accepted yourself fully unconditionally and yeah that that is um sadly something that we have been trained not to do (laughs) through life is is there any advice that you would give your younger self? Oh, my younger self. What would I tell her? i tell her to, to stop worrying so much. I'd really, I'd tell her to stop worrying and tell her to trust and tell her to, I'd give her such a big hug. You know, I would just give her the biggest cuddle and stroke her face and just tell her that it's all going to be okay what I'd say. And outside of the goddess space, what are you loving at the moment? Oh, well, outside of the goddess space, if I'm honest, it's kind of, the goddess space is my life in the sense of it's, I, you know, it's, it's my life's work. Um, The only time I'm disconnected from that work is when I'm with my dog, but then even him, he's giving me messages constantly, you know, it's, it's a funny thing because work takes on a very different meaning when you are living your purpose because it is you and it's all of you. Um, so even the things that I'm, I'm doing recreationally, they're not recreational because they are a part of my journey, a part of the messages that I'm meant to be receiving. Um, But I I spend a lot of time in the countryside and I going on long walks. I'm with my dog. I'm with my fiance and my friends, especially this festive period. You know, I'm really just enjoying, enjoying joy, a lot of joy. That that was, um, yeah, sort of a leading question, because it's right. If you are doing work that is on purpose and that you really love and you enjoy and you're so inspired by, it really is everything you want to do. You just want to learn more and it becomes work and personal blends. And I think that it is important, of course, to have um, time away to do, um, to focus on filling yourself up, which could be just socially or exercise or whatever. But it's also, it really, the personal and the work fuses and it is just, that is you. And there isn't this need for the compartmentalization of things, which I think is actually, um, people feel conflicted because they have to be one person at work and one person at home. And often they contradict each other. So that, that brings a lot of peace in itself. 
just having that harmony between those two worlds, I would say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it, when you asked that question, I kind of started thinking, what do I do apart from my, and then I was like, hold on, I, I don't really. Um, yeah, if I'm not reading tarot cards with friends or books at night or documentaries on the universe and the cosmos, I mean, it's my work, so, but it's my life and, and I love it. Exactly. And with, if there's anyone out there who's just, who isn't involved in spirituality in any sense, and they, um, after they listen to this interview, our conversation, they think, I really want to just, you know, dip my toe in the waters. Is there anything that you would recommend for that person? I would say the best way that you can connect to your spirituality is by connecting to yourself because that is the first, the first link. So you don't need to go down the spiritual candy store and start taking everything around you, but actually use this time to start connecting back to who you are, connecting back to yourself, try and meditate, try and write, Try and take some time without anyone around, you know, walk in nature and start to hear yourself because you're being called at that point and your heart has messages for you. So I think the only thing you really need to do at that moment is turn inwards. Mm -hmm. There is so much great advice uh, in this conversation. I know that it's just going to really inspire people to look at that space within themselves. And that is where, honestly, guys, all your answers lie. They're all the answers are within you. And so next, this is my last question. I want to know what is, what, what does 2018 hold for the goddess space? I know you can't tell us exactly because you will be flowing but <laughs> today. What do you see for the goddess space? Today I see for the goddess space, um, a lot more spaces. So I want to be able to offer these experiences of, of physical spaces and internal spaces to more women. Um, so that's probably going to encompass more online experiences for people that live abroad. Um, and also collaborations. I really want to, to collaborate with different spaces in London and bring the magic to these spaces also, not just keeping it within you know, the space of my apartment, but bringing, bringing the magic around. So really kind of spreading spreading magic through spaces in 2018. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so excited to see this um, unfold. And so, well, just thank you so much for the work that you do, because as I mentioned, and I know I've said it a million times, but I just want to say it again, it really is just it is different and it's important and it's so healing. And I just, I think this work is <laughs> the most important work there is out there because it is so important for everyone to connect to their truth. And um, from that space, you contribute and create and innovate. And that is what allows us all to evolve. And, um, you know, we all want to grow. That's the reason we're here, in my opinion. So thank you so much for just being you and for sharing this space with us today. Oh, thank you so, so much. And thank you for creating your own space for all this wisdom that you're about to share with other people and all the beautiful hosts that you get on. So thank you for that. So there it is, my loves. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful interview with Anushka Florence of The Goddess Space. You can find Anushka's work over at www.thegoddessspace.com and connect with Anushka on Instagram at The Goddess Space. You can find these details as well as Anushka's advice for creating space over at the show notes for this episode at www.letitiaringe.com forward slash The Goddess Space. 
Make sure you leave a review for this episode on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can also subscribe for my weekly Create a Life That Is Beautiful newsletter over at my website. Next up, we'll be hearing from another dear friend of mine, Lauren Barber, who is a female empowerment coach, business mentor, yoga teacher, and well-being expert. Have a wonderful week, my friends, and join me for our next episode to help you unlock your truth and purpose. Oh,